Hi guys, today I'll be working on a very interesting device that was brought in for a second attempt data recovery. Uh, previously it's been uh, at the, what I know as a reputable shop in Montreal. They couldn't figure it out, so it's here for a second opinion. Interesting part about this unit is that it actually looks like a Mercedes-Benz key fob. Even if it is an actual uh, Mercedes-Benz merchandise, What's inside of it isn't made with quality components. Even though they make great cars, they do not make great flash drives. Most of these flash drives that are built for promo and marketing purposes usually end up having very low budget components on the inside. And uh, today's case is not gonna be an exception. And I'll show you in a few moments exactly what I mean. A couple of things uh, I wanted to mention, the device came in already taken apart. So because it's been somewhere else, whatever work was done, I, I don't know exactly what I'm getting into at this point. Uh, but uh, one step at a time, we'll try to troubleshoot this thing and get to the bottom of the problem. So let's check it out and see if the solution can be found. So these are the pieces that came um, in the package. This is the flash drive that was on the inside of the unit. If you look at it underneath the microscope, we see that it's got uh, some weird IDE uh, markings on it. Usually, if you look around the printed circuit board, you'll be able to find some markings uh, from the manufacturer uh, indicating what actual controller it will have. And in our case, it looks like it's an Alcor 6989GS. When I got this flash drive, the person that brought it in said that original issue with this device was that the connector got damaged and I can see that there was some repair work done on it. On the back here, we have a very interesting mounting pad design and if we look at our memory chip from the top it may not look all that different but if we flip it upside down <laughs> we see that it's a sandisk flash drive this is a very typical sandisk flash drive design uh, in a monolithic body why is there a flash drive mounted to the flash drive these promotional devices are built not to last but for impression but they're not very reliable and the reason for that is that components that they're made of are junk that device ended up on the back of this flash drive because when it was tested at the factory the controller wasn't running most likely and if the controller wasn't running these pads right here uh, they can uh, establish NAND protocol access so that controller from this flash drive through those pads will talk directly to the NAND component that is inside of this uh, flash drive bypassing the controller that this flash drive originally came with instead of throwing away um, a device that doesn't work it got recycled and it found its place and a second life on the back of this promotional unit what we need to find out now is how does this flash drive react when it's connected to the power supply so let's just uh, break out the uh, uh, multimeter gonna set it to diode mode let's quickly check VCC and VSS they're not in short so we can fire this thing up I have M monitor here uh, that I'll plug in to my kind of go-to device these days <laughs> for working with flash drives and that's deep spar uh, USB stabilizer so I plug this in I'll plug this part in here and switching over to the screen capture power it up nothing comes up here in the log no device is detected what is happening up here what do we see happening up here very common situation that I see these days nothing is happening up here let me show you why I turn off the power I unplug this unit and I turn on the power on the device all by itself and we get the same reading 
looks familiar so if we got no consumption at the bottom here that tells me that no device is connected right now no um, component is active that's trying to draw any current from this cable so I'm gonna set this to DC mode I'm gonna see how many volts we get sent to the controller and whether the controller is even getting any power at this point here we see that we're getting 5 volts on the uh, power pin we're getting 5 volts we're still getting 5 volts we're still getting 5 volts then it's hitting the controller controller is getting 5 volts 3.3 3.3 we're getting power out of the controller as well let's uh, set this back to diode test mode so I slash these here to expose these two tracks these two traces go under the con controller and mount somewhere one is going to run to data plus one is going to run to data minus um, let's make sure that they're attached so if they're attached we should hear this beep yeah this one is attached but this one is not attached so maybe this is our problem to pull this I'm just gonna add flux on this side and on the bottom film extraction on that connector is off let's just clean it up see all it was was slightly separated like that but I'll, I'll, I'll clean this up a little bit Let's try this now. Power on. And we're getting 30 milliamps and our LED is lit. Also, in our stats, we're getting safe mode, which is perfect. We'll add a little bit of flux. It looks like I might have actually tried to put a connector on this device <laughs> directly in uh, attempts to uh, mount it up. We're probably going to do a manual reball. I, I may have a stencil for it, but manual reball just, it's not a lot of pins. It looks like it's going to be fun. Let's do that. Let's make it pretty.
the melting starts quicker. There we go. All right, so our, our memory uh, is now all set. To keep it uh, leveled and to offset it a little bit, I'm gonna add some, some solder here. These are just unused pads, so they're just gonna kind of uh, level level it or, or prop the flash drive so that it sits even so to speak with the board see much gap there because the flux filled it. No short. And let's power it on. What are we getting? We're getting 60 milliamps. We're getting the LED. A 32 gigabyte FAT32 device right away. If we go in here and just view it, uh, view the hex edit, this is what we get and um, as we scroll it we can look at the sector map so you guys can see that this is actually the unit it looks quite blank but there is some data on there starting here moving up all of this is content probably wasn't much on there but it's maybe like nine gigs just like a very famous Russian proverb, trust but verify, this connector needed to be checked. Uh, when it broke off, there must have been some leftover solder on pads that might have covered up that break. When the other company put the connector back on, it was just simply overlooked. It's, a, it's an honest mistake, but troubleshooting it and finding out what else isn't working on the device would have led back to the connector right away. Because as you guys could see, that if the unit is not consuming anything, that means controller is not activated. If the controller is not activated, you need to link that up first. Link it up, then work from there. Then remove the NAND, then do other work. Find out why the controller isn't working in the first place. If the controller isn't working, that's your, that's your issue. But if the controller is present and you still have problems, then the problem is somewhere else. So, one step at a time and you'll get there. So hopefully you guys liked this presentation. If you did, hit like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here and if you're interested in data recovery, notify yourself by notification button. That will tell you when the next video is out. If you have any questions, comments, or if you wanna just share something, post that in comments below guys. I thank you very much and I'll see you in the next episode.